Rugby World Cup bronze final, folks, and it's England who walk away with the medals. Argentina, sadly for them, come away with this one from nothing. Just watching the end of the game, uh, I feel like these guys genuinely wanted that medal, man. Uh, it felt like the uh, the same thing last World Cup, the All Blacks guys, despite the fact they're playing in a game that nobody wants to be in, they, they actually wanted that medal. So, um, yeah, it's England who get it, but only just. 26 points to 23. We'll go through some key events and stats. You guys can let us know your thoughts. England had a bloody good start, man. Curry winning a penalty at the breakdown. Farrell slots the penalty to the booze of the French crowd. So 3-0. Ben Earl gets the first try of the game. The hands like um, Farrell to Smith to Earl. You know, just little pop passes. It's great. 10-0. And um, England's defense was just crunching. Like Fukundo East is a great big ball carrier. Boom, gets bounced out of a tackle. So um, nothing really much going for the Argentinians. They lose a line out. Alice Genge punch, uh, pounces on it. Argentina pinged it, not rolling at the tackle. So 13-0 after about as many minutes. It's about as bad as a start as you could have wanted for the Argentinians. Um, but they did have the crowd behind them. They opted for touch on 15 minutes, not the post. And the crowd loved it. They were getting behind them. They got advantage uh, when a cross kick didn't go anywhere from that advantage. They go back for a scrum. But um, England's big scrum nullifies their chance. Issa too slow to take it out of the back. So, yeah, first real chance gone. But Argentina, at least by this point, had got themselves back into the game. Uh, Boffelli beats Smith in the air, which is one of the advantages of uh, playing Boffelli up against Smith, who's not really a traditional fullback. And I think we saw probably more of Boffelli taking high balls from kicks than Freddie Stewart in this one. But, um, yeah, Kremer knocked it on a few phases later. So Argentina... Getting that momentum, but not really able to convert. They did, though, on 23 minutes when they got another penalty, just decide, right, let's take the points, because they needed something to show for all that momentum. So 13-3, uh, a few bits of skill, man. I know a lot of people saying, I don't even want to watch this game. Uh, you know, it's a nothing game, but you saw some skills on display, man, like Juan Monti Gonzalez with a fantastic line-out steal. Joe Marchant, like, picking up a ball one-handed that was loose, like, still some good skills on display. England get another penalty on the half-hour mark to make it 16-3. But right before halftime, crucially for Argentina, they did manage to finally get a try without knocking the bloody ball on. 35 minutes, best period of play. You had Malia setting up a felly for a break down the right wing, goes through some phases. They get pretty close to the line, and the veteran Kubeli is able to snipe over to, uh, to make it 16-10 at halftime. Uh, they did have to seemingly check a wee potential forward pass over on the left wing in the build-up, but it was cleared. So 16-10 at halftime. Run meters are 166, Argentina 188, England, so not much in it. It's been a fair bit of kicking, 19. Argentina 23 kicks England, which is, you know, sometimes that's a full-time kicking total. So by halftime, it's a fair bit of kicking. England's had more possession, 55%, more territory, 60%. There's been kind of... Not that many out-and-out -out chances. Clean breaks is two apiece. But crucially, I think, turnovers conceded from Argentina's seven to England's one. If they can get that right in the second half, they'll be better for it. And they had the perfect start to the second half, man. Like, Marcus Smith has to sweep back from an Argentinian kick into his own goal area. He kicks it, you know, exits, but doesn't go that far. Argentina run it straight back at them. And then Santiago Carreras, with a proper bit of individual brilliance, beats Theo Dan who I've been saying, why don't they play this guy? Uh, you know, he sits on the bench for 80 minutes, a total waste of time. Well, he gets beaten. He makes up for it in a bit, but he gets beaten. He should have made that tackle. Genji gets beaten, and it's a, it's a proper individual bit of brilliance try. So Argentina take the lead, 17-16, but how long does it last? Not long, because that man, Theo Dan, from the restart, Argentina can't exit. Santiago Carreras is the guy, so it's a flip. It's like one guy with the individual brilliance, one guy with the mistake. This time it's flipped on its head. So Carreras goes from the hero to the villain. Dan goes from the villain to the hero. He charges down Carreras, regathers the ball, and is able to go over for the try. So 23-17, the Argentinian lead is immediately nullified. And then the game kind of goes into a bit of a holding period, maybe partly because the subs come on and disrupt the flow of the game a little bit. Like Arundel, who's barely touched the ball, puts a big up and under. He regathers it, but then is. His kick was so shallow that some of his forwards hadn't retreated, so it's a soft penalty to be conceded. Uh, Argentina opt for the three, so 23-20. Argentina goes 17 phases. England win a penalty at the breakdown. It's Ben Earl on that one. 
Both sides, like I mentioned, they've brought on Krivi. Um, ben Youngs has gone off, so I think he got booed. Which if, if, I'm not sure if he got booed, but it seemed like he got booed. Hope he didn't get booed in his last game. But um, yeah, Danny Kerr comes on. So there's a bunch of subs uh, for both sides. Argentina win at the penalty, the breakdown, just for Santiago Carreras to miss touch for the second time of the game. Jeez, that guy can be frustrating at times. Um, but yeah, neither side was really able to get on top. England won a scrum penalty on 63 minutes to get a three-pointer, so 26-20. At least it's beyond a kick for them, but then Argentina get one in return, 26-23. Sanchez had a chance to even things up on 74 minutes after Mateo Carrera had had a great run down the left wing and just absolutely sat down Marcus Smith, but he missed it well wide. Well, well wide. So a poor kick from him, sadly. And uh, Argentina had one last chance. Mateo Carreras again with a big line break, but George Ford with a good tackle to stop him. Uh, they stopped for a crevy injury, but you know, both sides, I think, having a wee bit of a complaint. Like Farrell said, he got an elbow, but I'm pretty sure they looked at it and decided that the initial contact was, uh, I think it was Bruni, had his arm kind of tucked, so it wasn't like a leading forearm kind of thing. Uh, I don't think the Argentinian guys liked the Ford tackle. They thought it was high, but nothing doing either way. And um, yeah, eventually Argentina needs to snaffle that ball with the last minute, but ended up conceding the penalty. So to the boos of the French, I think largely French crowd, um, yeah, Farrell's able to kick it out and the game is done. So Argentina, three points short of forcing extra time. Would have been an interesting one to see it go to extra time. But yeah, as I said, the few of the guys, man, at the end of that game were on the ground in tears. Some of it's probably because they know they've played their last game. Some of them, I think, really wanted to go out on a minor high of getting a bronze medal. So you walk away from the tournament with something. Uh, but for the English guys, you know, job done. Uh, if you'd asked England fans, you get third place prior to the World Cup, would they have taken it? Uh, I don't think many people were picking it, put it that way. Um, final stats, run meters 405 to 288. It's in Argentina's favor. Argentina finished with more position, more, and ter territory finishes even. 53-47 is the territory. But second half position and territory is all Argentina, 59% for both. So they really pushed England in that second half. They finished with six clean breaks to England's four. 34 defenders beaten to England's 13. England have to make 173 tackles to Argentina's 108, but they still coughed up 13 turnovers to England's six. So lacking a little bit of clinical edge, man, but bloody close. Mateo Carreras is still an absolute weapon. 93 meters, two clean breaks, five defenders beaten. Juan Martin Gonzalez also probably one of his better games of the tournament. 47 meters, a clean break. Six defenders beaten. Ben Earl continued to impress. Gets a try. 61 meters for defenders beaten. Two clean breaks. But Underhill gets man of the match with a whopping 24 out of 24 tackles. I don't know that England win the game without that defensive shift, man. That is a Herculean effort from him. We await the final, obviously. If you're looking for something to do between now and then, I released another video on Two Cents on Tour the other day, which is the other channel where I kind of snuck into a Chinese university because the guards wouldn't let me in. I snuck in a back way. If you want to check that out, I'll put a card up there or a link down in the description. One game to go, guys. Rugby World Cup is one sleep away. You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye.